In this video, we're going to do an application problem that involves systems of linear equations. This application is going to have to do with a truck rental company. The example says, a rent-a-truck company plans to spend $5 million on 200 new vehicles. Each van will cost $20,000, each small truck $25,000, and each large truck $35,000. Past experience shows that the company needs twice as many vans as small trucks. How many of each kind of vehicle can the company buy? All right, so first of all, what we're going to do is uh, define our variables, okay, be, to be the things that we're looking for. So we'll let X be the number of vans, Y the number of small trucks, and Z the number of large trucks. Okay, and one piece of information that we're given is that the company uh, is going to buy 200 new vehicles. So the number of vans, X, plus the number of small trucks, Y, plus the number of large trucks, Z, should equal 200. Okay, another piece of information that we have is that they're going to plan to spend $5 million. Okay, now, how much are they going to spend on vans? Well, it depends on how many vans they buy. Each van costs $20,000. So if they buy X vans, they'll spend 20,000 times X. That'll be how much they spend on vans. For example, if they spend, or if they buy uh, 10 vans, then they will spend $200,000 on vans. Okay, the amount that they'll spend on small trucks is 25,000 times Y. And the amount they'll spend in large trucks is 35,000 times Z. And that's going to total up to be $5 million. Okay, now this equation looks a little bit unwieldy. I don't like all these big numbers. So let's divide both sides of the equation by a number. Now we could divide both sides by 1,000, but actually I think 5,000 will go into all those numbers. So let's do that and see what we get. Well, 20,000x over 5,000, that's just 4x. 25,000y over 5,000, that would be 5y. And 35,000z over 5,000, that would be 7z. And 5 million over 5,000 is 1,000. Okay, so that doesn't look uh, nearly so bad. 4x plus 5y plus 7z equals 1,000. So here's our first equation. Here's our second equation. Now what is our third equation? Well, notice we're also told that past experience shows that the company needs twice as many vans as small trucks. Okay, so if y is the number of small trucks, if you double that, that should be the number of vans. Right, so uh, if you have two times the number of small trucks, that should equal the number of vans. So x should equal 2y. Now I like to write equations where all the x's and y's are in the same side of the equal sign. So let's rewrite this as x minus 2y is equal to 0. Okay, so there's our third equation. So what we have now is a system of equations. Let's write out those equations here. x plus y plus z equals 200. 4x plus 5y plus 7z equals 1,000, and x minus 2y, I'm going to write plus 0z, is equal to 0. So we have a system of three equations and three variables, three unknowns. Now let's write the augmented matrix for this system. Okay, uh, <clears throat> The coefficients in the first uh, equation are 1, 1, 1, and on the right side of the equal, side we get, equal sign we get 200. Uh, then we have 4, 5, 7. 1,000. Then we have 1 minus 2, 0, 0. Now remember our goal is to get 1's along the diagonal and zeros everywhere underneath the diagonal. And then we'll do back substitution. Okay, so first of all, I want to get a 0 in the place where this 4 is. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to multiply the top row by minus 4 and add it to the second row and give us a new second row. So minus 4 times row 1 plus row 2 that will give us a new row 2. Now similarly in the bottom row I want this to be a 0 so we're going to do minus 1 times the top row so minus the top row plus the bottom row, row 3, and that will give us a new row 3. Okay so what do we end up with? Well we're not getting a new top row even though we're going to multiply it by several numbers here. The only new rows we're getting are row 2 and row 3. Okay, what do we have in the second row? Well, we do minus 4 times the top one plus the second one. Minus 4 times 1 is minus 4, plus 4 is 0. That's exactly what we wanted, it was a 0 there. Minus 4 times 1 is minus 4, plus 5 is 1. Minus 4 times 1 is minus 4, plus 7 would be 3. And minus 4 times 200 is minus 800, plus 1,000 would be 200. Okay, in the last row we want to do minus the top row, 
plus the bottom row. So minus 1 times each of these top things plus the bottom. Now minus 1 plus 1, that would be 0. That's exactly what we wanted was 0 there. Minus 1 plus a minus 2, that would be minus 3. And minus 1 plus 0, that would be minus 1. Uh, also minus 1 times 200, that would be minus 200 plus 0 is minus 200. Okay, well notice uh, that we have uh, zeros here. We want to get a zero in this next place, right, where we have the negative three. So what we're going to do is multiply this middle row by three so that when we add it to the last row, we'll get a zero there. So we're going to do three times row two plus row three to give us a new row three. Okay, now notice row one and row two are not changing. One, 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 200. 0, 1, 3, 200. But we're, we are going to get a new third row. So we do 3 times this row plus this row. Well, of course, 3 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 0 is 0. That's good. We don't want to mess up that 0. All right, then 3 times 1 is 3. 3 plus minus 3 is 0. And that's also good. We wanted to have zeros down in this lower triangle down here, lower left triangle. Okay, and then 3 times 3 is 9. 9 plus minus 1 is 8. And then 3 times 200 is 600. 600 plus minus 200 would be 400. Okay, now last of all, uh, we want to get a 1 right here in this corner. Okay, so how do we get a 1 there? Well, we're going to divide that row by 8. Or in other words, we're going to multiply it by 1 8. We're going to do 1 8 of row 3. That's going to give us a new row 3. So again, the first two rows are not going to change. But we're going to divide every number in the third row by 8. Well, these first two will stay 0. This will be 1. And then 40 divided by 8 is 50. Okay, now what we have uh, is uh, this is a row echelon uh, matrix right now. And we can uh, write the uh, corresponding system down here as, as follows. So we can write the first row as x plus y plus z is equal to 200. The next one is just y plus 3z is equal to 200. And the last one is just z is equal to 50. Okay, I've just rewritten what this matrix is uh, in terms of these equations. Okay, well, we're already, we already know then that z is 50. Well, what's y? Well, we're going to do back substitution, right? So back substitution to find y. We have y plus 3z, but z is 50, is equal to 200. Well, that's y plus 150 is equal to 200. And so what that gives you is that y is also 50. Okay, so x is 50 and y is 50. And now the question is, what's z? Well, go back to the first equation. We have x plus y plus z equals 200, but y is 50 and z is 50. And so that will equal 200. So what we have is x plus 100 is equal to 200. So x is equal to 100. OK, so what does this mean? Well, x was the uh, number of vans. OK, x is the, the number of vans. Uh, y was the number of small trucks. And z is the number of large trucks. OK, and you can check. Uh, all the pieces of information are satisfied. There's a total of 200. 50 plus 50 plus 100 is 200. Uh, if you add up the amount that's spent on each of these, it's it's going to end up totaling up to be 5 million. And also, it said uh, back here that they wanted um, twice as many vans as small trucks. And is that the case? Well, notice we have 100 vans and 50 small trucks. So that worked out perfectly.